what it's about. Why don't you just tell him? Don't judge me. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, no, she's... Pray. I'm just going to pray now. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Everybody's saying good morning to each other. It's good. It's exciting. Plus, Kelly and Paul are back, which is really exciting. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I hope everyone is doing well this morning. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's good to see Elijah. Hello, Elijah. It's good to see you. <laughs> and um, it's going to be an awesome morning. It's going to be, I'm excited for this morning. So I hope you guys are all excited. Um, God's going to do something awesome this morning. I just know it. He always does. Every time we come together, he does something amazing. So I'm excited, right? Like, amen. Like, <laughs> And uh, we've, I just wanted to share a little something before we get started, and we'll do it also, we'll share more on it again. Oh, hello, Paul. Look at you. Looking all florida -y. Okay. He just, you know, it's okay, Paul. It'll become warm again, you know, here. It's soon. It's soon. You guys were gone during the, <laughs> the fun times. So, um, so I just want to say that um, we've been getting letters in the mail um, and some notifications on some testimonies, which we'll put together and share with you guys. Um, it's really been blessing us. So I just, I think it's important to share when people are writing in and saying what God's doing. Um, it's really important to share it. So we're going to put those together and share them with you guys. But God is, you know, a lot of, so we do, we do have cameras in the service and we do it for our YouTube channel. And the reason we do that is because sometimes people can't make it here or they maybe they're gone for a period of time. And a lot of the testimonies we're getting in are from the YouTube channel. So it's really a blessing for people. They are, it's, it's, it's a good thing. They can see and they can take in the word. They even feel the spirit over the internet, even though it's better in person. <laughs> it's, you know, you can still feel it, you know, over that. So we, we just, we want to continue with that, and, uh, and I just want to let you guys know that the cameras are on, and sometimes when we minister, um, if we call you out prophetically, and let's say you're not comfortable coming up in front of the camera, you can totally let us know. We will not judge you. We will say, oh, it's okay, and then we'll just, we'll minister when the camera's off, so to you. Is that okay? So I just want you guys to know that, that if you're ever uncomfortable coming up during ministry time, if we call you up prophetically, and we have something for you, you can just let us know if you don't want to come up in front of the cameras, that's okay, and we'll minister to you when the cameras are off. Does that sound good? Okay, 
So I just wanted to let everyone know that that they you didn't have to be on candid camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So I'm just gonna pray over all of us. So let's just stand up. It's gonna be an awesome morning together in the presence of the Lord. I'm excited to worship with you guys. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. You're just so good. I thank you, Father, for your presence this morning. I thank you, Father, that you never leave us and that you're never going to forsake us. I think, sorry, I had my hairs down if you didn't notice. <laughs> Bro Brogan did my hair, girl. Brogan's awesome. Okay, sorry. <laughs> But she does. She does a great job. So if you ever need a hairdresser and you're looking, Brogan's awesome. She's got the nice, beautiful orange hair right there. It's like an orange is cool. Okay. Anyway, that's not the prayer. Okay. Leslie, back. So um, I just want to pray over us and just say that, Father, I just thank you that this morning you're going to move. And I thank you that what you want to do in people's lives is going to take place this morning. And Father, I just speak your presence in this place. And I thank you. And I say that you can have your way. You can have your way. And, Father, we are just going to be patient in your presence this morning. We're going to let you do what you want to do. If people fall out, we're going to leave them and let God touch them. Uh, God can do in two minutes what you can't do in 20 years. So, Father, I just, I just thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord. And let's enter into worship together. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. No, you've already won. Let's sing that verse again. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, you've already won. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you. There is no army with the power to conquer truth. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. Oh, you've already won. Hey! Show me one thing you can do. Show me a mountain you can move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible show me one thing that's too hard show me waters he can't part he's the god of the breakthrough and anything is possible is possible <laughs> there is a kingdom there is a kingdom that's advancing at the speed of light and in his kingdom every dead thing is bound to rise oh god our redeemer he is faithful to revive oh he will revive show me show me yes show me Show me, show me one thing he can do. Show me a mountain he can move. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can part. He's the
Father, you said it, you said it, you said all things are possible. All things are possible for those who believe. You've said that all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible for those who believe. I thank you, Lord, that all things are possible. All things are possible for those who believe. All things, all things, all things, all things, all things, all things, all things. All things are possible. All things are possible. Thank you, Lord. All things are possible. All things, all things, all things. Do that again. You are here. You're moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that 
today and forever. Jesus never changes. Jesus never changes. He said, these works I do, you shall do in even greater works than these. I thank you, Lord, that you are a miracle worker. I thank you that we serve the God of miracles. We serve the God of miracles. Miracles aren't dead. <laughs> Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. And where the presence of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom from sickness. There is freedom from oppression. There is freedom. There is freedom. There is freedom. I thank you, 
Jesus, that you are a miracle worker. You're a miracle worker. You're a miracle worker. You're a miracle worker. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You are a miracle worker. You're a miracle worker. Father, may this house this morning be a house of miracles. May this house this morning be a house of miracles. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for your presence. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Everything you do, Jesus, is dependent on you. It's not dependent on us. It's dependent on you. It's dependent on your word. Father, I put a demand on the anointing. Father, I put a demand on it. I put a demand on the anointing. I thank you, Father, that you said we could boldly come to the throne of grace and ask for help. And we can ask for help in times of trouble. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for boldness. May you grant your servants boldness. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that we are called to be bold. We're called to be bold in a world that needs boldness. We're called to, to lead those who are in darkness into light. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Wow. I thank you, Jesus. Grant your servants boldness as you stretch out your hand to perform miracles. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Huh. Wow. Whoa. Jesus, you're so awesome. You're so awesome. I love your presence. I just love your presence, Father. I love your presence. 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 I love your presence, Father. I love your presence. I love your presence. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. Let's sing that again. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Let's 
sing it again. So make me your vessel, make me your offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, and all you have given me, Jesus, bring sing this from your heart. I just want to pause. I want everyone to enter into worship now. Don't get distracted by everything that's around you. Get into worship. This is the most important time. When you're doing this, this is, <laughs> this is the only thing that matters. Sing this chorus from your heart. Make me your vessel. Make me your offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, and all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Let's sing it again. So make me your vessel. Make You want me to be I came here with nothing And all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me
you know, I've sung that song like a million times and that verse, I need you more than the song I sing. Did you guys hear that? We can sing a song and we have a reliance on the song. I need you more than even the song I sing. <laughs> That's so powerful. That's so powerful. You need the presence of God even more than the worship song that's coming out of your mouth. You need the presence of God even more than that. Isn't that so beautiful? That's so amazing. Thank you, Lord. We need you more than yesterday. We need you more. You can't rely on yesterday's daily bread. You can't eat stale bread. Thank you, Jesus, for fresh bread. <laughs> Thank you that we need you more today than we did yesterday. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I said it before and I'll say it again. Maturity in Christ is becoming more dependent on him, not less. <laughs> it's becoming more dependent on him, not less. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray for a dependence on you, Jesus, in this room. A dependence on you. A dependence on you more than the air you breathe. Can you imagine needing something more than the air you breathe? <laughs> That's what the song says. More than the air you breathe. Air is pretty important the last time I checked. <laughs> you need air so that you can live. And this song is saying you need Jesus more than the air. <laughs> Do you guys hear that? That's prophetic. <laughs> <laughs> you need him more than the air you breathe. More. More. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we would realize that, you know, when you accept Jesus and you become born again, you're now a spiritual man. And your spiritual man relies on the presence of Jesus. It relies on the food from the word to survive. What happens is we keep thinking we're a natural man. <laughs> And we keep relying on the natural things to sustain us, but they don't sustain us. I've known people, I don't fast a lot, okay, guys? <laughs> I'd look better probably. <laughs> but the point is, <laughs> I've known people that could fast for long periods of time just living off the presence of God. Did you guys hear me? <laughs> you need him more. You need him more. Thank you, Lord. This last song we're going to sing is one of my favorite songs of all time. It's my whole life's anthem. It's from an Irish revival. If you don't know it, you'll know it quickly. But it was a revival that happened in Ireland. It's called the Belfast Revival. Robin Mark. I knew she was going to get excited. Here we go. And 
and ever hope to be. I want to hear your voices. sing that cause it's only in cause it's only See, this song is keep playing. This song is hard for me to end it because um, you can sing this song like forever. It's such a simple song, but it just wraps up everything in one package. <laughs> Jesus, all for Jesus, all that I am, all that I have in all that I've ever hoped to be. All of my ambitions, hopes, and plans, I surrender these <laughs> into your hands because it's only in your will that I am free. See, the reason this song means so much to me is that if you think, like, if you look at me now standing here leading a church, this was not my ambitions, hopes, or plans. <laughs> Everything that I ever wanted to do, I laid at his feet. Everything I ever wanted to go after, Everything that I ever wanted to be, I just laid it down and I said to God one day, I said, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want for me? What is your will for my life? And what is it that you want me to do? <laughs> and the truth is, if I had gone after all of my ambitions, all of my hopes, and all of my plans, I would never be as free as I am now. <laughs> Did you hear me? <laughs> I would never be as free as I am now. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that we become a people. It doesn't mean you'll pastor a church. It doesn't mean you'll travel to Africa and do missions work. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It could mean that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. What would our lives look like if we laid down all of our ambitions, hopes, and plans, and we said to the Lord, 
What is it you want for my life? What is it you want for my life? I know I'm speaking to someone this morning. <laughs> what is it that you want for my life? The scripture says that your life is not your own anyway. <laughs> We live in an illusion that it's our lives, but our lives belong to him anyway. And he's really good at doing what he does. He's really good at it. Smith Wigglesworth once said, no man ever need be afraid, or maybe it was A.A. A. Allen, I can't remember. One of the generals said, no man ever need be afraid that he's gone too far for God. Nobody's gone far enough. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't think you heard me. <laughs> he said, you don't ever have to be afraid that you've gone too far. You can't go too far. The, the extent to which God can use your life is infinite. It's infinite. It's infinite. There is always more in the Lord. There's always more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus has asked us as his friends... Jesus says this in the scripture. He's asked us as his friends to lay down our lives for the brethren. Do you know it says that? He's asked us to lay down our lives for the brethren. He's asked us to do that. <laughs> oh, That means people will walk over you like a rug at the front door. <laughs> people will do things for, to you. You're just going to have to get over it. It's going to happen. When you lay down your life for the gospel, if you think it's going to be easy, it's not easy. There's things that come and there's things that go. And the truth is he remains the same. He remains the same. He never changes. He never changes. You can always rely on Jesus because he never changes. That is good news. That is such good news. Father, thank you. Tracy, if you could just keep playing lightly in the background. I don't want to put too much pressure on Jess. She's pregnant. She's got a very large belly right now. She's pregnant. Although the glory of the Lord gives her strength. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Troy, just come up here, Troy. Troy is going to share something with you guys, and then we'll make announcements. But I want you guys to stand in the spirit of worship. I, 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 I. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Troy just walked up here. Come, Troy. <laughs> Good morning. This is hard being up in front of all my peers. I used to be a wedding DJ for 28 years. I could speak to a bunch of crowds, strangers, but God impressed upon me just to share something, and I want everybody to hear it. So I have two different types of parts of my personality. I'm either going to talk a lot or I'm going to just freeze. So we're going to talk. So without going too much into it, gave my life to Christ many, many years ago. Like anybody, you know, you go through your peaks and valleys. And what we learn to do is we learn to really dig in. Because in order to get to that higher peak, when you hit that valley, you dig in even further. So I was struggling for a little bit, not in my faith, not any of that stuff, but for a couple of months, I, I just, I was struggling. It's just like, I, I want some of this. And many of you probably may or may not feel the same way, but whenever Leslie or Yaku would call me up to, you know, call up to a stage, I felt like my hind end was stapled in that seat. And I couldn't get up. I didn't get up, and I should have got up. So, last Sunday, I did get up. Thanks to my wife for saying Yaku needs help because people are getting slain in the spirit. So I came up here, but I wanted it. And I'm stepping over people, and I'm trying to help, and I'm praying. I remember Leslie walking off to the side, like, okay, we're done. And I remember stepping over people, touching her shoulder, and said, I want this. And I raised my hands up to the Lord, and I said, okay. I've been in this valley for two months. I've asked for it. I want you to do it. And all I remember is, is touching Leslie's shoulder. I went down and had an experience I've never had before. Um, uh, 
I had I had my shell, but my flesh was about 500. It didn't hurt, didn't feel a thing, but my flesh was about 500 degrees, and it was just burning, and it was replacing with joy. I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop laughing. I apologize to you, Selena, because we're driving home. I didn't know if I could drive home. And she's like, what are you giggling over? It's like, I can't stop. So laying down on, and when I was slaying his spirit, I got up and Jesus told me, this is day one. I remember texting Leslie and Yaku who were on day two, two. It's like, okay, this isn't stopping. This is just keeps on going on and on. And I'm going to get to an important part. Five days completely in the spirit, just living life. I had fun. I had a great time. Got a whole new reunion to Jesus. Jesus spoke to me twice. And it was like, you guys, I mean, right there. Yeah, I mean, audible. Had something, he had one of my second largest customers that's kind of going through whatever. And, you know, normally it ruined my week. Um, Jesus just spoke to me and says, Troy, don't worry about it. I got this. Just keep following and trusting me. It didn't even bother me. So then I hit Friday, a little bit of a valley. And you got one of two choices. You can either go in that valley and be in the flesh, or you can walk out of that valley and be in the spirit and came back into the spirit. If I could give any one of you any advice, when you have an altar call, when you feel your butt stapled to that seat, you get up here and run. I mean it. Why did I wait? Run and get this. It's okay. It's totally okay. The biggest thing that I figured out was that the love of Jesus Christ doesn't make a difference what you do, what kind of morning you had, what kind of day you had. He just loves you. And you know that from reading the Bible, I feel that every single day. He doesn't even look at anything that happens. Okay, I didn't follow you quite. I didn't do whatever I was supposed to do. He comes back and he just, I, I love you. I love you. So when that time comes up, if you feel even right now, you run up to the altar and you receive some of this because it's the best feeling you're ever going to get in your entire life. I can attest, I just want more of it. And I pray this over you all in Jesus' name. Ooh. Ooh. When Marlon yelled, that just hit me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Linda, did you make my oil? Can I have it? <laughs> I don't know. It's the glory of the Lord. Just put that there. This is exciting. is what we're going to do. Yaku's going to make the announcements. And you're going to hear the word. Is that exciting? And then I will touch you. But you need to wait in the presence of the Lord. Is that fine? So we're going to wait in his presence. He's moving already. So we're going to wait in his presence. So Yaku's going to make announcements. We're going to preach the word. And then we're going to minister. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoicing is a choice. You need to stir up the joy that the Lord lays inside of you. Rejoicing is a choice. <laughs> Rejoicing is a choice. I laugh in strange situations. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that I laugh when everybody would panic. I thank you, Lord. <laughs> Come, honey. Amen.
God is good. Okay, so there is Children's Church um, at the back. So the kids can go to the back. And then for the moms that have um, babies, we just want to say this again. You can, if you can sit to it's the back, because if, if you have a problem, then you can run to the nursery. So the nursery, for those that don't know, is down the foyer, the first, sorry, the second door to the left. The first one is the closet. You don't want to go there. Don't take the kid to the closet. Take them to the nursery. And, and it's hooked up so you can watch the sermon. All right. God is good, right? Um, children's church. All right. What is the second one? Um, we have our evangelism training. Let me just do one at a time because there's a number of them. There, we have evangelism training. This is starting this th- Thursday. It'll be from 6 to 8. Okay? Yeah? 6 to 8. Friday, it'll be 5 to 7, and, in the, and then Saturday all day. All right? So for those that attend Thursday and Friday... We're going to go out Saturday all day, early morning, and then we're going to minister in the streets, and we're going to, yeah, have fun. Okay, so anybody is welcome. It is on the website. We do ask that you just register so that we prepared because we're going to have to drive around and stuff like that, so we just need to make a few arrangements. So if you want to attend, please just register for that. It's, it's at no cost. Um, it's just for the purposes of getting everything organized. So on the website... The events page, you can click on there, or you're even welcome to just text us on the church's cell phone number. You can even do that if you like. Okay. Um, then, for those, there's a number of people that's asked us to get baptized again, all right? So, um, for those of you that want to get baptized next Sunday, all right? Next Sunday, you can just bring your clothes and a towel. Uh, extra clothes and a towel. Well, you usually do come with clothes, but I'm saying uh, just bring extra clothes and a towel, um, and then and then we're gonna we're gonna have people baptized next Sunday. So we'll have the evangelism the whole weekend, and then on Sunday after the service, we're gonna have we're gonna baptize people again. Okay. Then on Easter weekend, we will have a Good Friday service, and it'll be at six thirty. So Good Friday at 6.30 um, in the afternoon, we will have a service, okay? So, yeah, amen, amen. Okay, then, um, yeah, I'm going to, you guys can put up the, the offering stuff for us. I'm just going to have him have everybody come up, bring the offering. I'm just going to share on that for a few minutes, maybe two minutes, and then Leslie going to come up and preach. What else is there? Uh, Okay, so we, like Leslie said, we're going to start sharing some of the testimonies from some of the, especially online lately, there's been a lot of testimonies coming in through people that's watched. I'm not going to go into all the detail. Um, One of them was a lady from Green Bay that send a testimony on how God really touched her just through watching the service. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, so there's been a lot of people um, that's, that's been watching, that's been touched, and even got healed through watching, okay? So we praise God for that. Um, there's some awesome stuff. I don't know, Le- I don't know, Leslie was going to share it, I think, next Sunday. Um, yeah, there's, there's people in the service that would just sit during the worship and the word and they would go home healed, right? So that's, we've, we've had those testimonies come in and God is good, all right? So, I mean, I can actually read it off to you in a minute. But, so our aim with, I'm, I'm just sharing on about two minutes with us. So our aim here is over the next couple months, maybe four months or so, we are planning to really reach more and more people through the broadcasting. We're planning to get new equipment so that, you know, it'll be, um, Brandon them has really helped us to make progress, um, and the sound is pretty good, um, thank you, Matt, for that, um, so, yeah, we, we're reaching more and more people, and we're planning to go on to 
more platforms to be able to reach more people. Amen. Okay. So you guys can come and, and, and bring your offering. Leslie got these new golden ones, copper ones, whatever, whatever color they are. Um, yeah, so you can bring, and then you can also give online. You can go to um, Life at the Well at the website, and you can go, you know, through the giving or partnering page, and you can give through that. You can also just text uh, Life at, just text the number, and then you can give through texting as well. And um, yeah, so on the website, you just do it through PushPay, for those of you that don't know how to do it. Um, you can go to the website, um, you can go to PushPay, and then you just put all your details on, like as if you're doing a car transaction, and, they, and you can give that way too. Amen. God is good. I'm excited to see you guys. Guys, I tried to use the head mic. I tried, but it got stuck in my hair. And then I said, the Lord says no. So I love you guys back there. And Well, I'm okay with the hand mic. Yaku tends to go, so that's okay. So I love you guys back there. Sound booth trying to make me hands free. <laughs> they tried. They do, I know. And it got tangled in my hair, and I was like, what? What's happening? Okay, so, <laughs> so I gave up, and I said, Lord, unless my hair is shaved, there's just no point. Thank you, Elijah. I agree. Yep. So the Lord put this word on my heart. So I'm <clears throat> sometimes Yaku and I will switch between preaching, but this particular word he really put on my heart for today Um. I just, you know, okay, I talk a lot about Heidi Baker. I know that you guys have heard me speak about her a lot. <laughs> but I just, there's something that she said. What did I do wrong? Oh. So, it's okay. He needed his pen. So, <laughs> so what I wanted to say was, um, she said this state, I, I just want to share what she said. So, she said, this is when miracles started breaking out in her ministry. And if you don't know who Heidi Baker is, who she is is she is um, somebody who lives in Mozambique probably 80% of her life or 75%. And then she travels for three months around the world preaching. And um, in Mozambique, it's, in Mozambique is the poorest nation in the world. So it's extremely poor. And she said that, you know, this was at a time in her life where God really started to do miracles in her ministry, all right? And this is when miracles started breaking out in her ministry. And, and what was happening was blind people were seeing. And she just would lay her hands on blind eyes and they would open. And she would lay her hands on blind eyes and they would open. And she'd lay her hands on blind eyes and they would open. And uh, she thought... I just want you guys to hear what she said. This is so powerful to me. She's laying her hands on blind eyes, and then she says to God, Oh, God, am I going to have a healing ministry like Catherine Kuhlman? This is what she says. And, um, well, I mean, she's, she's a big deal, actually. It's just funny. This is before she was famous. So she said, Oh, Lord, am I going to have a healing ministry like Catherine Kuhlman? And do you know what God said to her? You're blind. And she said, Lord, what are you talking about? Like, what are you saying to me? How can I be blind? What are you saying? I see the, I see the blind people. I'm opening their eyes. What's going on? And he said, I want to show you how I see. Is this getting anyone? <laughs> she said, he said, I want to show you how I see. And she said, when he said that, scales came off of her eyes. 
Do you guys know that scripture that says the scales fell off of his eyes? So she had this experience. The scales came off her eyes. And when she looked out, she saw the Western church. That's you guys. (laughs) So she said in her book, I read this. Because I said to God, I said, God, why did you take me to Africa only to bring me back here? Why did you, why did I go there to then come back here? And when she said she saw the Western church, what happened to her was she believed that only Africa or only the third world nations could receive the things of God. And they were the only ones that needed it. And God was showing her that the Western church needed it. Is that okay? So she, and she did not like the Western church. She was like, no, I'm not going there. I'm not doing it. I like Africa where people get excited about God and they, and they give it all over and they, but God showed her the Western bride. And God was speaking to me about what I'm preaching on today and um, how God sees versus how we see in the natural and what it looks like when you're looking through God's eyes versus when you're looking through the eyes of the law because we all fall into looking through the eyes of the law. And what happens is, is that when you look through the eyes of the law and what the law is, let me just paraphrase this, what the law is, is it's the knowledge of good and evil. Is everyone with me? So it's seeing good and seeing evil, and it's saying, well, this is good and this is evil, so I'm good because I'm doing X, Y, and Z. That's what the law does. But if I'm doing this, then I'm evil. And what happens is is that all of the righteousness is based on what you're doing or what you're not doing. And Jesus paid a price that we would receive his righteousness, not based on what we do or don't do, because the law is holy, and you cannot do it. The law is holy. The the Bible says the law was holy. The law, only God could do the law. Jesus was the only one that ever fulfilled the law. Did you know that? Jesus. He was the only one. (laughs) So only God could fulfill the law. That means that the law is representative of what it means to be holy, and only God could fulfill it. Is everyone hearing me? This is powerful. This is going to help you. (laughs) So only God, only God could do it. Okay, so what happens is, is when you try to see through the knowledge of good and evil, you put yourself in the law and you judge. And the, and the Bible says, judge not lest you be judged. So when you judge, judgment is put on you, right? So it depends on how we're seeing. Is that fine? If we're not seeing through Jesus, we're seeing through right and wrong. Is that okay? Okay. This is going to help you. Father, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I think Heidi's happy about it. (laughs) Jesus really opened my eyes to this this morning. I think I want to start in John. This is going to be hard. There's so much in here. Okay. I'm going to start in John. And I'm going to start, or do I want to start in John 8? I'm going to start in John 8. I've got a starting place. John 8. (laughs) So we're going to start in John 8. Thank you. I'm going to start in verse, wow, verse 31. Is everyone ready? Verse 31, 8, 31. John 8, verse 31. Here it comes. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, wow, this is, <laughs> this is so powerful to me. Okay. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know. That know means you shall see the truth. When the Bible uses know, we think of know as head knowledge. That's not what the Bible means. It means seeing something. Observing something. It means beholding something. So when I see something, 
Like if I see Yaku, I know it's Yaku. I look at him and I'm like, I see him, I know it's Yaku. It's not knowing in your head. It's not knowledge. The Bible is not knowledge. The Bible is not a science book. It's not a math book. It's not an English book. It's a book that's written for your heart. You see the truth through your heart. Is this fine? You cannot know the truth in head knowledge. Is that okay? The longer that I'm in Jesus, the less I know about things. It's true. I have no idea what's going on in the world. People say that's bad. You should watch the news, and I just don't. I have no idea. I don't even know what the gas price is. I don't know anything. <laughs> I know him, and I spend my time looking at him. That's what I do. I spend my time looking at him because I want to look like him. <laughs> so I spend my time looking, like, looking at him. <laughs> Look away from all, who dis- all that will distract by looking unto. Thank you. That's what I do. John 8, this is where it gets important. The Jews answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. Stop. So Jesus says to them, if you receive my word and you abide in my word, you're going to be free. These Jews said to Jesus, we are Abraham's descendants. We've never been in bondage. So I just want you to hear me. When Yaku was doing an identity class, he read that part, and it hit me so deeply because I realized that they couldn't see that they needed a Savior. They couldn't see it. They couldn't see that they needed help. They couldn't see that they needed a Savior. They're like, we've never been in bondage. The whole time they've been in bondage. If the law is present, the whole time you've been in bondage. <laughs> if, you, if, you're, if you're living by the law, you're in bondage. And, you, and, and that is bondage. <laughs> so they say to him, we've never been in bondage. They couldn't even see they needed a savior. This is, this is deep. So it says, I don't see that I need a savior. That's basically what they're saying. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. So Jesus was saying to them, you guys are sinning, therefore you're a slave to it. But they believed they had no sin. That was the hip hop. We're going to get there. So, oh, man, God is good. Don't jump ahead of yourself. Don't jump ahead of yourself. Sin comes out of unbelief. Is everyone with me? So sin comes out of unbelief. So what happened is the Pharisees did not think they were in sin because they believed they adhered to the law. But Jesus knew what they did behind the scenes. So what they did out in public was of the law, and what they did in private was not, and what they did here was not. Jesus could see their thoughts, could see their heart, could see the whole thing, and because he could see into them, he said, you're full of sin. (laughs) You're full of it, because sin starts here. It's unbelief in the heart that gives rise to not believing God. This is good. (laughs) So it says, Whoever commits sin is, and a slave does not abide in the house forever. I have a hair in my mouth. There we go. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Listen to Jesus. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen my father So Jesus only spoke what he saw of his father. That's it. (laughs) Is this too deep? Should I stop? (laughs) Okay. Jesus only spoke what he saw of his father. And then the next part of the sentence says, and you do what you've seen of your father. Jesus is saying to them, I know that you're Abraham's descendants. You are physically Abraham's descendants but you aren't spiritually. Hello. (laughs) Because you're doing what you see your father do, and now Jesus is going to get real personal. 
He's going to get really, you know, everyone's like, Jesus was so nice. He was so nice to everybody. He wasn't nice to everybody. <laughs> oftentimes he flipped tables, and oftentimes he got angry at religion. Wow, okay. Hmm. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you, you need to hear this. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. So Jesus was saying to them, you're not doing the works of Abraham. You're doing the works of someone else. Now, why would Jesus say to them, you're not doing the works of Abraham? What are the works of Abraham? Do you guys know the answer? What is the answer? The works of Abraham are faith-based works. They are not works of the law. So Jesus was saying to them, they are not working out of faith. They are working out of the law. Is this good? Okay. Then it says, but now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. So what is Jesus saying? Jesus, saying is, Jesus is saying when God came to Abraham, he did whatever God told him to do. And Jesus is saying, I'm coming to you with the truth, and you're not doing it. You're not believing me. So they said, you're not the children of Abraham. This is so good. Then it says, you do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God was your father, you'd love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself but he who sent me, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my words. You are of your father. You guys can say it. <laughs> I'm going to go back to Genesis in a second. So there is something about seeing good and evil that is of the devil. Is anyone with me? <laughs> you guys are like, no, nah, she's making this up. But I'm going to read it to you in the Bible. <laughs> is that okay? Is that okay? Do you guys know the story of Adam and Eve? Or did, did someone tell it to you in a storybook? And you don't really know what it says. Because you look at pictures and you think you know what it says. And you don't read it for yourself. You need to read it. You need to know what it actually says. Because... The church cannot be stuck in good and evil. If they are, they are of their father. I'm not going to do that. You guys can join me in faith. It's better. <laughs> Is anyone with me? Oh, I'm going to read you something out of Hebrews. That's gonna, I'm going to read you something out of Hebrews that's going to blow your pants off. Is that fine? I'm going to read you something out of Hebrews that's going to blow your pants off. Let me ask you a question. Did Abraham do everything good and nothing evil? Don't lie to me. What did he do? What did he lie about with his wife? Tell me the story, you guys. Know this story. So is that good? But wasn't Abraham called righteous? <laughs> Thank you. We're getting there. So... If that's the case, if he calls someone righteous because they believe him, not because of good or evil, then why do we do the opposite? Guys, come on. I'm trying to help the church. <laughs> this is, you, can't, you can't make yourself holy. If you could, you wouldn't need Jesus. You wouldn't need him. So he makes you holy because he lives in you. And because the righteousness that he has purchased, he's given it to you. It's a gift. It's called the gift of righteousness. You cannot earn it. Get over yourself. You're going you're gonna to wear yourself out trying to be good and not being evil. You're going to wear yourself out. You can't do it. A hundred million thousand times a day you fail. Don't you know that song? A, a thousand times I failed, still your mercy remains. Do you guys know that song? A thousand times throughout the day, I get mad at Yaku for his socks on the floor. And that's sin. A thousand times. And then I get up on a pulpit and the Holy Spirit anoints me. 
A thousand times it happens, a thousand times, a thousand times, because I can't do it. I'm so glad. Do you know the Bible says he prepared mercy's vessels for wrath and vessels for mercy? You're a vessel of mercy. I'm going to help you today. You are not to be having the wrath of God come on you. Is this good? Okay, here we go. You don't want the wrath of God, believe me. Because let me tell you something. Just one lie, just one bad word, just one fit of anger would have caused the wrath of God to fall on me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I take the, Thank you, Jesus, because I can't do it. Okay, everyone ready? Then it says, you're of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. He is the liar. He is a liar and the father of it. Is this good? So did Jesus think that the Pharisees lie? He called them do you, do, okay, we're gonna, I'm just going to paraphrase Luke 12, 1 quickly. What is the leaven of the Pharisees? What does it say in Luke 12, 1? Do you guys know? It says, the, the leaven of the Pharisees is hypocrisy. What is hypocrisy? Hypocrisy is putting yourself out one way in public. Yeah, no, this is deep. Maybe this is too much. <laughs> Maybe this is too much. Maybe this is just too much. Cause I, cause I know, like Brandon, I don't know if he's back there. We were, we were in the Dunkin' Donuts drive-through. He was on the phone. He wasn't in the drive-through with us. He was on the phone, and Yaku and I were having an argument about a sausage egg McMuffin or something. And I was like, "Would you please order your coffee before I lose my mind?" And Brandon witnessed the whole thing. We don't act different in front of people in our personal space versus here. We're the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> the fact is, is that we are who we are. And he makes us who he's going to make us. There is no difference between how I am here and how I am at home. I laugh just as much here as I do at home. <laughs> There's no difference. The Gallegos have seen me. I've spent enough time in their home. They know. Okay, here we go. Genesis 2. You guys need to hear this so that you guys can be free. Is that okay? Genesis. Genesis 2. My Bible fell apart. I'm so sad. It came apart. That's okay. Paul needs to give me that tape thing he does to his. Genesis 2. <laughs> Here we go. Genesis 2. So we're in the garden. Is everyone there with me? We're in the garden. Genesis 2. And it says the following, 15, verse 15. Then the Lord took God, the Lord, the Lord God took the man, Adam, and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you can eat. But, does it say but? But, of the tree of the, of What should you not do? Why? What are the wages of sin? So until this point, until this point, when God was speaking to Adam, he, Adam had no knowledge of good and evil. Is everyone with me? This is going to help you. Wait till you get the big sucker punch in your gut, which is going to be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Make me stupid to good and evil. <laughs> Is everyone ready? Here we go. Then it says, and the Lord God said, oh, that's, that's me that comes in the picture, not me, but Eve. But here I am also a woman. Okay, you shall surely die. Then we go on, and I'm going to go to verse 25. Verse 25 of the same chapter. And they were both... Somebody read it to me. Oh, they were naked. Oh, and they were what? <laughs> this is important. So what does the law do? We're going to read more. The law causes you to cover. 
and grace causes you to uncover. Is everyone with me? (laughs) Amen. Thank you, Lord. I remember when you said to Heidi Baker that you saw holy, transparent saints of God coming down from heaven, and I take it. I want to be (laughs) see-through. I I want you to see is what you get. What you see is what you get. Is this okay? Okay, here we go. Then it says, verse 3. Now this, or sorry, chapter 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? I want to stop here. Do you realize that this means when the serpent is present, this means that good and evil existed already? So evil was already there. If you want to ask God why he created evil or why evil was there, you need to ask him because I don't know the question. I don't know the answer. I'm not the Lord. He's God and I'm not hooray. (laughs) But there it was. It was already there. So then it says, and the woman said to the serpent, what may eat the fruit of the tree? We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it or you will die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. There's the lie. (laughs) There's the lie. So now he seeps, he comes and he sows. The reason Jesus always talked about the parable of the sower was really important. He said, Jesus said, when, when I come and I sow the word, it says, protect the word in your heart, otherwise something's going to come and steal it. What comes and steals the word out of your heart? A lie. <laughs> A lie comes in and it takes the word out of your heart and belief and unbelief creeps in. Is everyone with me? So it takes it out, and unbelief creeps in. Here it is. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, somebody say it out loud. Sorry, your eyes will be? Your eyes will be? Your eyes will be? So were their eyes shut to good and evil? So their eyes will be opened. This is what the serpent said. And the serpent was telling the truth there. Because after they ate it, what happens? It says their eyes were. That was the truth. The lie was you won't die. (laughs) Here we go. It says your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing So who is supposed to know good and evil? Was it ever our job? Why did we employ ourselves? (laughs) Now, as you read on in the Bible, you find out that God gives you wisdom. And God gives you righteous judgment in situations. But it is through God. Please listen to me. It is not through the works of the law. It's through God revealing these things to you by his spirit. Is that okay? Okay. So here we go. Then it says, so when the woman saw that the tree was, (laughs) and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband, and they ate it. Then the eyes of were, and they knew, Oh, man. And they sowed fig leaves. Didn't Jesus curse the fig tree? You never saw that, did you? (laughs) What does the fig tree represent in the Bible? Jesus went up to the fig tree in front of the disciples and said, you will never bear fruit again. And he cursed it. This is good news. So they took fig leaves and they, and they made themselves a, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife, and from the presence of the God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, 
So he said, I heard, don't you think God knew where he was? This is God we're talking about here. (laughs) Then it says, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was because, and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I told you not to eat? And what comes after that? The curse. Is everyone with me? So, two things going on here. One is, is that Adam and Eve were created naked and they were unashamed. What is that really meaning? I, I just want you to think about what that's really meaning. What that's really meaning is it's being naked before, before the Lord means you're not covering anything. You're, all things are not, nothing is hidden from God's sight. When you think you're hiding things, you're deceived. Nothing's hidden from his sight. He sees everything. And grace causes you to be naked in front of him without any shame. If you don't know the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will feel condemned in the presence of God. (laughs) What happens is, because in the presence of God, it says that they hid from the presence of God. That's what it says. Now, I don't hide from the presence of God. The reason I don't is because I know that he's happy with me. If you don't know that he's made you righteous because of what Jesus did, you'll hide from the presence of God. And you'll cause others to hide from the presence of God. Is that okay? Ah, oh, he's so good. Is everyone with me? Okay, let's go back to John. Is this too heavy? If it's too heavy, just say stop because it is a lot. Okay, John 9. Here we go. So what are the works of Abraham? They are works of faith. So if you do not do works of faith, then you are not the father of Jesus. That's where this whole thing comes into play. Is that fine? Or, I mean, not you the father. You're, you know what I mean. You're not the children. (laughs) Verse 9, or chapter 9. Here we go. This chapter, Jesus has just healed a blind man. Now, you need to read the last part of the chapter. Is everyone with me? And Jesus said to him, okay, so let me just start in verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast out the blind man who now saw. And when Jesus had found him, he said to him, do you believe I'm the son of God? Or do you believe in the son of God? He didn't even say I am. Do you believe in the son of God? He answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and he is who is talking with you. And Jesus, then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may, and those who see may be. Wow. Wow. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'll take that, Jesus. Even if no one takes it, I'll take it. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words, and they said to him, Are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But, ha- but now you say, We see, therefore, Your sin remains. Thank you, Lord. Is that okay? Is this getting, is everyone getting this? Is this good? But please, I'm going to, I'm going to shortcut it. The reason I'm going to shortcut it is it's, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. This is a lot. It's a simple message, but it's a lot. This is a lot. This is a lot. The problem is there are many teachings in Christian churches that mingle the law, and they don't even realize they're doing it. And it happens in a lot of churches. You hear people say, well, I've got to deal with that man because he's smoking. Or I've got to deal with that woman because she's doing X, Y, and Z. 
I got to deal with it. I got to I got to sort that out. And the problem is is that <laughs> when Christ died. Now you need to hear this. Just let me just say this. When I am saying this, I am not saying you should go out and drink. Please hear the the heart behind what Jesus did. Jesus in the Bible it says he no longer imputes sin against you. Do you know what that means? That means he doesn't charge you with sin anymore. That means when he looks at you, he doesn't see sin. Is everyone with me? Okay. So if he doesn't see sin anymore, and then I go deal with someone's sin, what am I doing? <laughs> he doesn't see it anymore. So what's happening is instead of believing God, we are now dealing with your sin. And we're trying to fix it through our own abilities. I've had people say to me, Leslie, I'm trying to quit smoking. I've quit smoking for three days. I picked up a cigarette again. You can't do it. <laughs> the reason you can't do it is because you can't do it. You can't do it. I did not quit drinking because I decided one day to quit drinking. I quit drinking because the, the power of Jesus removed it from my life. <laughs> okay? Like, he removed it. It's not there anymore. He removed it. I don't struggle when I get up and say, hey, I, I hope I don't drink today. That is not my life. He removed it. Jesus has the ability to remove it. <laughs> so I don't want to know about Oh, do you remember when the woman that was pouring her oil on the feet of Jesus and then wiping his feet with her hair? Do you remember that the Jews said to him, if he was a prophet, he would have seen her sin? God never gives me a word of knowledge to share publicly to disgrace you. He'll never do that. Even if I can see what you're doing in your private life, he'll never do that to, to you. He'll never do that to you. He'll never pull you up here and say, Leslie, I want you to give the word and, and, and in front of the church tell them how this person's sleeping with someone that's not his wife. God will never do that. Even if it's true. Are you guys hearing me? So what does God do? God speaks into your life who you are in Christ. So he speaks into your life who you now have become in Christ. Even though that thing might be true, he speaks that into your life so that you can become what he's paid for. Is that okay? This is good stuff. I wanted, yeah, I'm going to go to Hebrews 11. I just want to take a minute. Here's the deal. I want to see the way that God sees. I don't want to see. Is this fine? I don't want to see. Paul said, I want to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. So I don't want to have discussions about people's junk. I, even of myself, there are times we fall into that. And there are times that we gossip, and there are times that we talk about people's junk, and God is asking us not to do that. He doesn't make junk. God doesn't make junk. God doesn't talk about people like they're junk. He doesn't do that. He talks about people. The people were so precious to him that he, that he let his own son be killed so that you, could, that you could be bought. That's how important you are. So here I am discussing with people and gossiping with people and calling people junk. Jesus said, do not call clean, unclean, that which I have called. I want the church to stop being sin conscious. 
I want them to be God conscious so that you can call clean what he has called clean. Is that okay? Whew. Hebrews 11. Let's just read it, Lord. I'm just going to read it for your name's sake. I just want to quickly reference this. Start in Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a... So how did the elders obtain any sort of a good testimony? By? Did they do it by the works of the law? Are you guys hearing? I'm just reading the Bible. <laughs> I just, I, I just got, ooh. Okay. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen are made of things not seen. I want you to hear this part. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent. This is Abel. Does everyone know who Cain and Abel was? Was this a long time ago? Oh, way before Christ? I just want to make sure we're on the same timeline. <laughs> Abel was way before Christ, and it says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was. Was Abel called righteous? Was this before Jesus? Was this before the law? How did he, how did he get called righteous? Because he had what, Yaku? <laughs> then it says, By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he, and what pleases God? Doesn't it say it later in the chapter? Go on, let's keep going. But without faith, it is impossible to, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of the household by which he condemned the world and became heir of? Noah became heir of righteousness. Was this before Jesus? <laughs> By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he would receive as an inheritance, and, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, for he waited for the city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Who is that? The church. <laughs> you are a city set on a hill. You are the light of the world. God does not dwell in houses made with sorry i'm reading scripture do you guys not know it god does not dwell in houses made with hands <laughs> is everyone with me here we go then it says by faith sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed eggs <laughs> i take this for me more eggs I, I, I'm 41. I went to the doctor last week, to the lady doctor. Y'all know what those lady doctors are. We're not going to give them a name. A gynecologist. I, don't, I just didn't want to be so, like, particular about it. And I went to the gynecologist, and, you know, one time I was, I just shared this with Joe in the doorway. I got to share this quickly. I was driving my car in New Jersey, and my car threw on an engine light. This is back in 2015. And I went to the dealership to get it checked because I thought there's something wrong with the car, and I don't even have the money to pay for it. The engine light is on. This is bad. And I went to go get the car checked out, and there was nothing wrong with the car. And God spoke to me. He goes, just like you went to find out that there was something wrong with the car and there was nothing wrong, so shall your life be. You don't know my testimony. You don't know how many times he's done this to me. He's been faithful. He, he, he hasn't lied. It's like incredible. I can't tell you. So everyone's been telling me there's something wrong with you because I'm 41. You know, you can't make a baby at 41. You can't. And Sarah made a baby in her 90s. And they said, they, it's in there. It's in there. It's in the Bible. And then I had people telling me, you're not going to make a baby. You're not going to. You're 41. It's done. Your time is over. 
You're only going to be able to do it if they do that whatever that thing is. <laughs> that thing, <laughs> that, that IVF thing. And I said, Lord, you did not say that. William Undy stood in front of me. He said, you will go to the U.S., a pastor will resign, and he will give you a church that's dead and only bring revival, and it will wake back up again. And he said, and in the United States, you will have a son, and you will raise him in the United States. And I believe it. And she was serious. She was serious. She looked at me and she said, you're 41, girl. She's like, it's not going to happen for you naturally. Then they sent me through a myriad of tests. They shot some dye into my uterus. I'm, di- I'm just going to be graphic. They shot dye into my uterus, into my thing, whatever this thing area. And, and let me tell you something. I was in pain. I was in pain. It was cramping. And then I said, oh, this hurts. And I said, is childbirth like this? And then he said, it's worse. I was like, oh, my Lord. I was like, Lord. I was like, Lord, be with me. Be with me. Because if I'm going to have this baby, I can't even handle this okay so here I am in the thing I'm getting this procedure done and do you know what the doctors said to me they went through all that test they looked at my fallopian tubes they looked at my uterus they looked at everything and they said it's normal (laughs) it's normal it's normal everything is normal just like when my car His timing is perfect. Eggs, 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 eggs. But I want to tell you the prophetic thing. So before I went to go get that dye thing, <laughs> I sat in Jess Cato's kitchen, and here was Marlon. And he's like, I'm going to get me some chickens that make a lot of eggs. And when he said eggs, I prophetically heard eggs in my mind, and I went, I need eggs. <laughs> I said, I said, Marlon, throw me some eggs. And so he put his hand out and he goes, eggs, 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 eggs. So when they did the testing, when they did the testing, they told me that I have a low egg supply. That was after that prophetic thing happened. And they said, you only have a certain number of eggs you're born with. You can't have any more. But God, God can make eggs. He can put eggs, and I take them by faith. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, That was a testimony. Sarah. Okay, I want to stop at that, but I just, (laughs) righteousness is counted because of belief. That's what this whole story is about. I just, I know people think I'm an idiot for just believing when someone says something to me prophetically, but I'd really just believe I just believe it. I don't try to add to it. I don't try to take it away. I just believe what he said. I take it as it's said, and I believe it. So when William prophesied about this church, I prayed exactly what he said over my life. I said, God, I don't know how you're going to get us there, but I know you said this. Just like, God, I don't know how I'm going to make eggs supernaturally, but I know you're going to do this because you said it, and I believe it. Because they're trying to push the IVF on me. They're trying. Amen. One egg. But I'll take more, you know. Just give me lots of eggs. So I just, (laughs) they're trying to push that on me. And I just, that wasn't part of the word. Is everyone with me? I want to be a medical miracle. (laughs) I want to be a medical miracle. Because you guys don't know my story, you know. Like when I was a teenager, I just want to share this with you. This is important. You guys need to hear this because this is faith building. When I was 16 and 17, I thought I lost my chance at having children. Because I had two abortions. Don't judge me. (laughs) I had two abortions when I was a teenager. This was before Jesus. This is before I was walking with Jesus. And I said to myself, that was it. That was my chance. And I spoke those things over my life. And you know what Jesus said? You will have the fruit of what you. So I canceled my order. (laughs) I canceled my order and I said, God, you said. You said I'm going to have a baby. You said. And because you said, I believe. 
And when I had my abortions, I didn't take a pill. This was back before pills. Guys, you need to hear this. I don't care if this is graphic. This is real. This is before pills. This is the time when they do an actual procedure where they scrape out parts of your uterus. And I could have had permanent scarring. And there's nothing wrong with my uterus. I thank the Lord. He redeemed me. He redeemed me. He redeemed everything about me from the pit of where I was to where I am now. And he's going to make a baby. (laughs) He's going to make a baby. He's so good. He's going to make a baby. I'm excited about it. (laughs) And I have to tell you something about the will of the Lord. This is something the Lord corrected me on. You know the will of the Lord is heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. That's what Jesus does. If you mimic Jesus, you're doing the will of the Lord. He went and he prayed. He laid his hands on the sick. He prayed. He did. Anytime you're doing that, you're doing the will of God. You know what else he showed me in the word? He said, it's my will to multiply you. Because <laughs> I didn't want children. And he's like, it's my will to multiply you. <laughs> and I was like, Lord, I haven't been in line with your will. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for correcting me. Because I was like, no, we can decide if we want to have babies or not. Please don't get condemned. (laughs) If you don't want to have children, it's okay. But the point that I'm making is I was against it, but I didn't see in his word that it was part of his will. So I'm going to let him multiply me. (laughs) Matthew 23, is that okay? I hope that really hit you because it hit me. That was amazing. I love you, God. I believe you. Okay. He's so good. So I believe that we're going to be pregnant soon. So get ready for the good news. Because <laughs> when I have that baby, that's a redemption of what I lost. I'm like, yes, <laughs> I can do it. This is going to happen for me. Matthew 23. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I love this. Matthew 23, the beginning. Jesus spoke to the multitudes and his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. What does that mean? The seat of? And what is the law? Judgment. I don't want to be in Moses' seat. (laughs) Is that okay? I don't want to be there. Okay. Okay. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and they don't do. For they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men, but they themselves won't move a finger. (laughs) But all their works they do to be seen by men, they make their, I don't even know how to pronounce that word, phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places at feasts, the best seats in the synagogue, greetings in the marketplaces, and to be called teacher, teacher. (laughs) But you do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brothers. Do not call anyone on earth your That just blows away spiritual father teachings. Anyway, we'll leave that alone. (laughs) Okay, so then it says, don't call on anyone, anyone on earth your, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever exalts himself will be? And he who humbles himself will be. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. What does that mean? It means they shut the door for people to go into the kingdom. The law shuts the door. (laughs) It shuts the door. They keep men from entering into something that Jesus is going to pay for. This is so good. (laughs) Then it says... For you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense you make long prayers. That means for a showing. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. 
For you travel land and sea to win one, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Oof. <laughs> Yo. Jesus is personal here. It's like, oh my God. And then it says, woe to you blind guides, blind guides, blind, who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind. And he goes on and on and on. But this is one of my favorite parts. Verse 25. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of your cup, but inside you're full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of your cup and dish that the outside may be. So how does my outside start looking like my inside? What did Jesus say that the word does? So when Jesus enters into my heart, and I believe in him by faith, he lives in my heart by faith, when I take the word in, which is his word, it cleanses here, which makes my cup clean. (laughs) So he cleanses everything here, and he makes my outsides look like how he looks. Isn't that so awesome? Louie liked that one. <laughs> so we, you can have a really nice cup. <laughs> or you can have Jesus' cup. What would you like? <laughs> I also want Jesus' cup. I want, I want what's coming out here to be him. Right? Like, so I let him do this work in me through his word. He will correct you through the word. It says the word is sharper than any and it can divide, it can, it can work in me, and it can, it can do such a work. It can do such a work. This is important. Because even in my resistance of children, that was a smack in God's face to his word. <laughs> but he lovingly corrects me. And I like that because, I, because discipline is good. Discipline is good for your children. <laughs> it's good for your life because you wouldn't want to let your two-year-old run off a cliff. Oh, he'll figure it out. When he, when he gets to the cliff, he'll make the right decision. No, he's two. Like, like you can, right? Do you get what I'm saying, right? We have, to, we have to remember that he does that to us, but he does it here because the Bible is written for your heart, not for your head. So he cleans you here, and then... Your outside cup is looking like him. Isn't that good? Thank God he doesn't deal with us outwardly. (laughs) Paul liked that one too. (laughs) Really, like if you think about it, if we were vessels prepared for wrath, every time you and I did something that wasn't in line with the law, we would have been stricken down (laughs) or cursed or whatever, right? And thank God it's not like that. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. He's not dealing with your cup the way that you think he's dealing with your cup. He's dealing with this so that your cup can look like him. Is that good? I, you know, one of the things that I want to say is that grudges, like holding grudges, don't work in Jesus. They don't. You have to let it go. And you have to let God do a work in your heart so that you can be free. I just, he said this to me this morning. He said, he said it so clearly. He said, the law will make you hide and grace will make you unveiled. So in the Bible, the word, it says, when the law is read, a veil is put over their face. But when they turn to Christ, the veil is. So when you're in the law, you're, you're blind to Jesus. You can't see him. That's why the Pharisees didn't know who he was. Even when he did all the things he did, all the miracles, all the, they couldn't see him because the law makes you blind. 
But when you turn to Christ and he removes it, you can see him and you can see you in him. (laughs) So you can see you in him. Because the Bible says that when you are a doer of the word, not just a hearer, or sorry, if you are just a hearer and not a doer, you are like a man that looks in the mirror and then when you walk away, you forgot who you were. So in order to see yourself the way Jesus sees you, you have to do, you have to hear and do what the word says. Is that okay? So the word is a lamp unto my feet. I take it really seriously. I know people get offended with the Bible and they're like, <laughs> they're like, don't get religious. Don't get in the word too much. Don't da 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 da. This is my life. <laughs> This is my life. This is God speaking to my soul and my spirit. I need this. <laughs> this is important. I need this. It corrects my path. It corrects me. It keeps me going the way that I should go. He's preserved me through a lot of stuff. A lot. And there and thank God he's preserved me. Cuz what I look like at 41 is not what I looked like at 21 when I got born again. It's not the same. <laughs> He preserved me through a myriad of things, of wrong directions. I always say God is like the ultimate GPS system. I kept going left when he said go right. He's like, he's like rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. I'm going to get you back on your path. I'm going to get you back because God was ready to do in my life at 21 what he's doing now. The call is irrevocable. When he calls you, he calls you. You can't get away from it. He's going to GPS your whole system till you get back on the road on the way that he wants to take you. And thank you, Lord. Because <laughs> if it was dependent on me, I would have went way somewhere else and be lost. Thank you, God. Thank you for being the ultimate GPS system. Thank you. Because <laughs> he's like that. Thank you, God. Is this blessing, you guys? We're just going to wait a minute in his presence. You know, one of the things that God's done in my life and I, I pray this for you. Um, Yaku, like when we're, okay, I don't really say curse words. And when I do, it's very infrequent. <laughs> and when I do, it's like, ugh. but when I hear someone else say a curse word, I never feel like I can't believe they just said that. I never feel like that because God doesn't have me looking at them like that. So when they do it, when they're dropping, I've had people in the presence of God dropping F-bombs. They're like, this is effing amazing. I'm like, I know, right? (laughs) I know that you weren't supposed to say it like that, but, right? I, the whole purpose of this is for people to experience the Lord so that it changes you. Is that good? I've had people tell me that when they're around me, like in private and stuff, they feel comfortable. They feel like they can be themselves. They feel like they don't have to be somebody else. They can be who they are. And that is exactly what Jesus looks like. Jesus allows you to be uncovered, unhindered, unafraid, because he's chosen to work through you. He's just looking for people that will say yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I once had a prophet say to me, I want to say this, and then I'm going to minister. I once had a prophet say to me, okay, so I'll get words of knowledge. Does everyone know what a word of knowledge is? Well, some people I don't think do, right? Some people might. A word of knowledge is when you're standing in front of someone and you know something about their situation that you couldn't have known unless God showed it to you. Okay, so when someone stands in front of me and I touch their hand, often I get a download. It's like, <laughs> like, okay, 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 okay. no, <laughs> and I, you know, and I see things, and and then he sifts through what he wants me to speak into. Okay, but even more than those, I get dreams. I'm a big dreamer. I dream a lot. Two thirds of your Bible is dreams and visions. 
Do you guys hear that? <laughs> Two thirds of your Bibles is Bibles. <laughs> Bible is dreams and visions. The entire book of Revelation is a vision. The entire book of Ezekiel is a. <laughs> so I get dreams. I was explaining this to someone the other night because I want to explain this. In the prophetic, I once had a prophet come to me and say, God will use you in the prophetic strongly because you have a lot of grace for people. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, because you're not refusing to hold their trespasses against them, he's going to show me stuff. Is this not good? This is a good word. <laughs> he will not use you if you try to hold trespasses against people. He won't. Because he can't. Because you've got the wrong vision. Is that fine? So I get dreams. So I just want to share this one with you because what God did in this relationship with this person still blows my mind to this day. I have a woman, maybe she'll watch on Facebook. She's still my friend. There's a woman in town who did my nails and my eyebrows. God likes to give me downloads in beauty parlors. <laughs> oh, wait, not the most fun moments. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm relaxing, getting my feet worked on. And he's like, let me show you this. And I'm like, no, 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 not right now. <laughs> and like, so I dream. So I have this dream about her. And in this dream, I was friends with her. And, in the, and I, did, I was friends with her in the extent to she does my feet and she does my eyebrows. But that's it. I don't know a lot going on in her behind the scene. God gives me a dream. This one really got me. In the dream, she was standing, I shared it. She was standing in front of me in the dream. This is a good, you need to hear this about the prophetic. She's standing in front of me in the dream, and she's soaking wet like she was in a swimming pool, you know, like soaking. And she had bruises and marks on her. And then God said to me, tell her the men that are coming into her life are going to destroy her. I, I woke up, I said, Lord? <laughs> like, what? no, 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 no. <laughs> like, maybe someone else can deliver that. I'm going to get my toes done. Because I was getting my toes done that next morning, and I was like, I don't want to deliver this. I'm like, this is not what I want to talk about while I'm getting a pedicure. So I'm like, I walk into my appointment, so I have to see her that next morning. And, I, and realize when God shows you something like that, it's to save the person. It's never to hurt them. You need to hear what I'm saying. It's to save them from making a decision that will hurt them in the future. Is that okay? So I go into the appointment, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, where is she? She's not in the room. And then she walks in the room. And when she walks in the room, she has fresh stitches over her eye. Are you guys listening? <laughs> okay, so she has fresh stitches over her eye, and she's standing in front of me. And I see her leg. She's wearing a skirt, and she's got, like, a bruise here. And I was like, Lord, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then she looks at me, and I went, and what I, I, messed, I missed God. I should have told her the dream first. But I asked instead, what happened to you? I said, are you okay? What happened to you? And she said to me, she started seeing this guy, and they were driving a boat in the lake. And it hit a big tree stump, and the boat overturned, and she was drowning under the boat. Did you hear my dream? She was wet. <laughs> she was soaking wet. And so she's like, and now all the hair on my body is standing up. Now I'm like okay. <laughs> She's like, I was drowning and Jesus pulled me out of the water. He, she was stuck under the boat. <laughs> and she had a vision of Jesus and, it pulled, and he pulled her up out from under the water. At, and then I have a dream. This is not coincidences. It happened just that day, the night I had the dream. But I didn't see her till the next morning. So she's standing in front of me and, I, and, and she's telling me the story. And I said, I have to tell you something. <laughs> I tell her the dream, and I said, God told me to tell you that you need to stay away from these men in your life because they're going to destroy you, and she bawls. Now, tears are like, it's like streaming down her face because he was negligent. He was drunk driving a boat. She's streaming. It's just like, like waterfalls. Father, thank you. She's not going to watch this part. No, I'm going to share it because I've left her anonymous. Okay, she's streaming. She decides to stay with the man anyway. Now, I could have walked away from that relationship and said, Psh, good luck, girl. I warned you. But I didn't. I stayed in the relationship. And I said, I respect your decision. 
it was just my responsibility to tell you. I respect your decision, though. So she went on. She got pregnant and had to marry him. And till this day, she's struggling. Till this day. Now, that wasn't God's best for her. It wasn't. It wasn't God's best for her. But God can redeem anything. That's the good news. He can literally redeem anything that we miss or make a mistake on. So why am I sharing this prophetic story with you? Because I want you to know what it looks like to not hold trespasses against people. When she would see me in town, she would still feel that she knows. She remembers the conversation we had. She knows I was right, but she still respects everything about what I walk in. And she, she's been a supporter of our ministry ever since then, even though I said something that challenged her whole life. Do you guys hear me? That's what it's like to not hold your trespasses against people. <laughs> That's what it's like to speak truth into someone's life. Let God deal with it and still walk a road with them. Is this fine? I still, I, I, I don't want to be, I don't believe God's heart is division. I don't. And I don't believe God's heart is letting people walk a road by themselves. It's not his heart. He wants people to be together for a reason, but we have to learn how to not hold our trespasses against people and hold their trespasses against them, and we have to learn how to, how to minister truth into each situation. Is that true? Yeah. You have a word. Yeah. Comfort. Yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended and that her iniquity is pardoned. He is not holding your iniquity against you. I thank you. I thank God that he uses me in the prophetic. It's not my favorite. Everyone says they want to be a prophet. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not that fun. <laughs> it's not that fun because there's times you have to sift through your own junk so you don't minister the wrong thing. <sighs> that wasn't the only time. There was another. I could share plethoras of stories. I've had them even while being here. I remember Paul looked at me and he goes, you didn't dream about me or anything, right? I was like, no, Paul. I was like, you're good. No, I'm teasing. Uh, he doesn't do it like that. But like, but I... What I'm trying to say as a joke is I've had them here, too, about people. I've had them. So the thing is, is that I trust him. I trust his timing. I trust everything about how he does it. I trust, I trust him. Sometimes he shows you things in your dreams just for you. Sometimes it's for others. Sometimes it's for that person directly. You have to let the wisdom of the Lord lead you. It's really important. <laughs> so, but God wants me to just minister now. Was that a lot in a message? Was that? <laughs> I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna have a baby. <laughs> no, baby. In my in my body, in my 41 body. Don't worry, girl, you're looking good. Um, so <laughs> thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He told me short. He told me to keep short and let some of this really sink in. Really let it sink in. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that we will have eyes that see people the way that you see people. I thank you, Jesus, for your grace. I thank you, Jesus, for grace and more grace, grace upon grace, because we have received an abundance of grace. I have received an abundance of grace. So who am I to withhold grace upon others? Grace, grace, grace. I've received an abundance of it. I've received so much of it that I didn't even deserve as much as I received of it. <laughs> I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that even in my wrong decisions, when you could have closed up my womb, you, did, you decided not to. You had mercy on me. You had mercy on me. You had mercy, 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 mercy. He is merciful. 
He is merciful and he's good. He's 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 good, 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 good. He's merciful. He's merciful and he's good. Thank you, Jesus. This is a word over several people in this room, and you'll know if it's you. But God says that the spirit of fear that has withheld you from acting on what he's asked you to do is going to (laughs) go. It's going to go in Jesus' name. It's going to go. He has not given you a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of a peace, love, and a sound mind. He is going to remove that thing because there are people in here that don't step out in the things of God because they're afraid. But God has been speaking to them. God's been speaking to you. And right now, it's going to go. That spirit of fear needs to go. Perfect love casts out fear. You need to know the love of the Lord. Jeff, please come up here. I just want to touch Jeff. Jeff is struggling with some health stuff. I just want to touch him. Before I pray for you, Jeff, I just want to speak something over you. I just want people to know that this man, listen, he doesn't like to be on the spot, but I'm going to put him on the spot anyway. Jeff, this man, I've seen very few men walk in integrity like this, okay? Like everything in our relationship that I've had with him since I've gotten here has been nothing but integrity and nothing but truth and nothing but honor. And so I thank you, Jeff, for letting God build that character in you. I thank you, Jesus, and I bless him. I bless him right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, right now, I don't care what his condition is. I don't care what the doctors have pronounced over him. I don't care what's going on in his spine. That's not the final word. So, Father, right now, I speak to his spine, and I say perfect health. I say perfect health in the name of Jesus. All pain go. All pain go and and stop coming back. Leave him alone. All pain go. He's an active person. He enjoys to run. He enjoys the things of the outdoors. So, Father, right now, I speak to his entire body, and I say, come into alignment with the word of God. Come into the alignment with the word of God. So sickness, you have no place in his body. And, Father, I speak your grace and your healing power from the tip of his toes all the way to the tip of his head. Father, just power power, life and power into his body, life and power in the name of Jesus, life and power, life and power and health. Father, when he goes back for testing, they will find that his stats have returned to normal. I thank you, Jesus, for a a doctor's report that's clean, (laughs) a clean doctor's report. No more, nothing, nothing, no more. Jeff, there's so much life for you to live. You have a lot of life to live. Father, thank you. I think they came to give us life and life more abundantly. Jesus. 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 How does your body feel right now? You tingling? (laughs) Do you feel any pain? Is it loosening? (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. More grace. More grace. More grace. I just hear the Lord say, Jeff, and this is a word for you. He said, do not grow weary in good doing, for you will reap a harvest in due time. So keep going. Keep going. He remembers the works of righteousness. So don't grow weary in doing good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And even Susie, let her not grow weary in doing good, for she will reap a harvest in due time. I thank you, Father, for power in that house and in that family. 
I thank you that Susie will even come in here and that I just feel that all of a sudden, all of a sudden an opening, an opening, <laughs> an opening, ha, huh, an opening to bless others. Whoa. Blessed are the pure in the heart, for they shall see the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Jesus. And even your mom, Jeff, even your mom. <laughs> Jeff's mom. I love those stories. Jeff, even your mom. Even your mom. Father, blaze Jeff so strong in your presence and in your love that it impacts all those he goes around. And Father, I speak a blessing over his business. May you prosper, Jeff, even as your soul prospers. May you be well off, and may you have more than enough. Thank you. <laughs> How's it feeling? Is it good? <laughs> and what's his name again? Huh? Jim. Come, Jim. your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Do you have children? Do you have like a small child? That's your only son. But I see, who's the small, I see a small child. Do you guys not have children yet? Do you want children? Are you married? You're not married yet. <laughs> I see, I see children. So you guys are dating, and this is your only son. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Blow him up, Lord. <laughs> Jesus, I speak into their family right now. Father, I thank you for a godly union. I thank you, Jesus, for just a joining together. And I thank you, Jesus, for fruit. <laughs> that they will bear much fruit. I thank you, Jesus, for fruit, <laughs> that they will bear much fruit. I see a steel machine, like a steel construction machine with like a handle. What is that? Who works? Do you work in a, is it steel stuff? What is that thing? I see like a crane. What is that? You know, like that thing that goes in the air and it goes like this? Or What is that thing? In your truck business. And what do you do? You do cranes for loggers. And you, I remember Yaku spoke over you about a promotion. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. More, Lord. I don't know what your situation was growing up. I don't know what the dynamic was. But I see a household where there was a lot of tension and there was a lot of stress. And right now... I just want to speak into your life and say that God is making your family a safe place where there will be no tension, where there will be peace. The house will be ruled by peace. All that, I just wipe all that away. 
and it's going to be ruled by peace. I don't know what happened in your childhood, but I saw, like, fighting between your mother and father, and there was just no peace. And, Father, I just speak right now into his life that it will be a house full of peace. You're not going the way that they went. (laughs) It's a new time. Thank you, Jesus, for peace in that household. Peace. And peace that reigns and rules. Thank you, Lord, that it's a place of peace. Amen. <laughs> So this is the last thing I'm going to say. And then it'll be a time. Ooh, my hands are like making all kinds of stuff. Um, This is the last thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to invite this time. But this is what I want to say. I want you to purpose in your heart that If you want ministry, if you want a personal time of ministry up here, I want you to purpose in your heart what you what you want. So whatever you want, God's going to give it to you. But I want you to purpose it in your heart. So I want you to come up here intentionally. If you want ministry at the end, come up here intentionally with a purpose in your heart of what you want, what you want, and he's going to give it to you. He says he gives us the desires of our heart. He gives us what we're asking for, what we want. He who delights in the Lord will have the desires of his heart. That's what the scripture says. And so purpose in your heart what you want. Because like with Troy, when he shared his testimony, the reason he received joy was because he wanted it. (laughs) And so he reached out and he grabbed it and he took it. So whatever it is that you want, God wants to give it to you. So I want you to stand, if you come up here for ministry now, I want you to stand with an intentionality with, w- with what you want. And Yaku and I will both minister, and, 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 and I believe God's going to give you what you want. <sighs> yeah. I'll summarize today with one statement. Take that invisible seat belt off your seat and come and get some of this because it's here waiting for you. So right now they can just put up music in the background, and Yaku and I are going to minister. So come forward with whatever you want, what you desire in your heart, what you purpose in your heart that you want, that you want. Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, I just believe God is going to give you an increase in revelation. An increase in dreams and visions, but an increase in revelation. It's like you're hungry and your heart's been crying for more. 
to just hear God saying, it's time for increase in revelation, increase in dreams and visions, where He will speak to you intimately. And I just hear... <clears throat> It's like, I just, I just hear him saying, he will speak to you face to face like a man speaks to his friend. And there will be that intimacy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Where's your father? Your dad is in, is in the service. I would like to minister to him. Is he, is he, is he left already? Oh, okay, but I'll minister. Oh. Jesus. Father, we thank you. Jesus. I thank you for your Holy Spirit the anointing of your Holy Spirit on him.